it's me, Brandon Colonel again. Sorry, I've been fairly absent lately. Uh, basically, just haven't been able to actually get a hand a hand on any kind of new blades lately. And uh, also the the few that I still do have to review, um, I just haven't had the the time to be able to get them fixed yet. And uh, just no time to run out to the post office to get them shipped in. But I am in the process of trying to get it taken care of now. I just have to wait for my next paycheck. Um, I intend to at least attempt getting those two up uh, probably by next week if I can. Uh, which uh, those would be uh, the CRKT Swindle and the CRKT Tirade. I should be able to get a review on, um, in on those in about the next couple of weeks or so. Should be, at least. Like I said, I'm trying to get uh, by next week, uh, I'm trying to be able to get them shipped out, and then uh, basically the moment that they actually get back to me, do just a, a quick little bit of testing, just to make sure that everything's in proper order, and then I should be good to go. But now, as for the reason why I'm here in this video currently, Late HQ came through. Yeah. Just got a new package today for a new knife. So, honestly, I think that I'm more excited about the the picture that I always get than I actually am about the knife. That's happened about the past two times now. And this time, I decided to get something that could be fairly intricate. And they did not disappoint. I decided to ask for Sage of Six Pats Naruto. And I actually got it. They did a really good job on this. So, Blade HQ, good job. You've got some some pretty decent talent. Now, let's get this, this package opened. I'll be using my Jason Browse Strife, Dustin Turpin collaboration. Trying not to damage the picture at the same time. Because, yeah, I always save those. Okay. Okay, got it here. Nothing else. Got the standard Blade HQ massive receipt. Everything looks in order. And now for a box that you guys don't normally see, and in fact would commonly see me ragging on quite consistently. Yep. It's a Spyderco box. This particular one actually caught my eye, though. <clears throat> and it is the Spyderco Myrtle. That's actually, that actually looks pretty nice. It's a little stiff on the opening right now, but that's kind of to be expected, seeing as it's on phosphor bronze washers and still has to be broken in. Phosphor bronze washers have to be broken in a lot more than bearings do. I mean, it, when I got this knife, it was pretty much about as smooth as it is now. It did have just a little bit of breaking in to do, just for the simple fact of the bearings need to wear a bit of a track in to be at their absolute smoothest, but it was already drop down free with just the tiniest amount of grit. Now there's no grit whatsoever and it's one of the smoothest knives I own. Even among the bearing knives. This does have a, a decent amount of breaking in to do. Now let's see. Initial impressions. Well that's good news. One thing that I actually thought was like already like massive wear was just simply a water stain or some kind of an oil stain, something like that. That's nice. It actually does flick out pretty well. <clears throat> I 
Eh, something that, you know, and this is just, as you saw, I opened the box right, right now, so this is literally just, uh, um, just my initial impressions of it, and uh, so I'm not really going to get it, get into specs right now, because right now I don't know them offhand, and also, I really do want to, um, want to get in some testing before I actually review this thing, so that way I can give my true unbiased opinion of it, because right now it is going to be fairly biased against Spyderco if I try to give any kind of opinion of it, as far as um, as far as like it truly talking about it. But um, so as far as just simply referring to my impressions of it. Um, I don't know, the finish may, may may wear on me a little bit, but I do like the fact that it's satin, but as far as exactly how the satin is done, I would like to see a bit finer grit on it instead of quite so low of a satin. Like, I, I would like to see a little bit higher polish on it, because I would clean up some of the inconsistencies in the in the, the finish on it, because uh, some spots look like they were a little bit deeper, some look like it was with more aggressive part of the belt, I, I don't know, but it, it just looks fairly inconsistent along the side of it. Um, so yeah, it, it may wear on me. I do like the fact that it's not stonewash, so that's a plus. But overall, I, I kind of would like to see that just a little bit cleaner, and and it seems to be standard of all Spydercos that have this grinder satin finish on it. Um, it is very sharp right out of the box. Uh, let me get something to cut real quick. Oh, forgot where I even put my paper. Okay, I've just got some uh, computer paper right here. <laughs> That is actually quite impressive. That is thoroughly impressive. I was not even this happy when I got my Spyderco out of box. But yeah, that that is very impressive. This carbon fiber is actually really different than anything that I've actually had before. They they advertise it as marbled carbon fiber, um, but even when I was looking at the at the pictures, that that's not actually marbled. That's shredded carbon fiber, uh, which is basically the newest iteration of marbled carbon fiber. But it's really not the same thing. Marbled carbon fiber um, is more along the lines of actual marbling. Um, it's got nice swirling patterns in, inside of it, and it it is thoroughly impressive. Um, probably the I've I've tried to look up marbled carbon fiber just in a Google search before, and I didn't really get up that many search results as far as what it actually is that I've seen. Um, so the best way that I can really have have you see marbled carbon fiber is to uh, direct you uh, direct you to another YouTube channel, um, Jim Skelton. Um, look up, I, I want to say it says Frank Fisher Battle. Um, basically just to watch that for a little bit. Uh, watch it the entire time if you feel so inclined, because it's actually a really good video. But, um, but the carbon fiber inlay on that knife is actually marbled carbon fiber, and it's the true iteration of marbled carbon fiber. This is, like I said, the newest iteration, which is uh, uh, shredded carbon fiber. And uh, basically, uh, as you can see, there's like little squares on it. My lighting really isn't the best right now. Uh, here, let me, let me actually open up this window and see if I can get some more light. Hopefully that did something, and eh, not much. 
Yeah, well, I can bounce it off there. Well, as you can see, there's there's like little square patterns from where the carbon fiber is shredded, put back together, or however the the exact process is. I don't really know, but um, but yeah, it looks like pieces that were put back together, and it's different. I I actually like that. The fact that it's not just the same old thing that I'm used to, which the the carbon fiber on this is phenomenally executed. I love it. But it's the same thing. I mean, I've I've got a couple of knives with carbon fiber on them, and it's literally all the same thing. Um, basically, the most different thing that you can get as far as standard carbon fiber would be something along the lines of my uh, Custom Knife Factory Sequoia. And that basically with the uh, uh, the intricate grinding that they did uh, to to just uh, wear away at this, and then it, you get a kind of a different pattern, but it's still pretty much the same thing. This is definitely a different type of carbon fiber, and so therefore it it shows, and so it's very different. Now I, I was hearing that one person who. Uh, who did a, a slight review on this, saying that the transition on his was seamless, you couldn't tell a, a transition from one material to the next. I only get that in the center right here. Right here there's a transition going upward, and right here there's a transition both ways, you can feel it. It's only right here that it's truly seamless. But it's a production knife, you can't really expect much more than that. And I'm I'm still very happy with it, so it's not like I was expecting to have that. But it is something to point out, just in case you're completely going off of the, the one guy who reviewed it. I, I don't even know his, his YouTube channel name. But he's pretty much currently the only person that I have seen to actually have any video whatsoever of this particular knife. The detent is really nice. I like a strong, hard detent, so that way you can flick it out really nicely without any kind of a problem. <clears throat> um, when I was actually looking at the blade shape of this, it really had to grow on me, because uh, I was looking at a lot of knives, and, uh, well, I guess I can't say a lot, a, a lot for me, I guess, because I was looking at about five or six different knives, and, um... Uh, this was one of them. I basically just decided to look over the Spyderco line and I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to give them a shot, see what they have. And uh, and there was actually a couple of Spyderco knives that I was looking at because I wanted to, to give Spyderco another chance after basically the flop with me on the Tenacious. Because I, I did not care for the Tenacious. In fact, I actually scrapped it to use uh, parts for two different knives that I have. Uh, part of the uh, Tenacious is actually currently in a knife that I traded, and um, and that's the Liang Ma Eraser for CRKT. And um, and then the other half of the, the washer set is actually currently in my ZT0770CF, which I'm thinking about trading that one. <laughs> so basically, th this thing is everywhere. And it's about to be even more everywhere. But, um, so yeah, the, the Tenacious was a flop with me. For anybody who likes the Tenacious, sorry, I really don't. It, it just, it didn't hit home with me. This one I can easily see as being different. And not just because I paid a lot of money for it, but because the quality seems to be a lot better. I mean, the, out of box... It's already smoother than, than the Tenacious was. There is that grit, and it's fairly tight, but I can already tell it's going to smoothen out. The Just from the feeling of the washers, it, it already just... It, I can't really explain it very well, but it just feels higher quality. The Tenacious, the G10 felt fake. Uh, the, the washers, although they did smoothen out, 
I never truly got rid of all the grit, and I didn't feel like putting in time and effort into smoothing them out myself with sandpaper and stuff like that. Um, I mean, even now, when it, my um, when it, when it's in my ZT, um, it's still not completely smooth, and I've used that knife a lot. Now, it does feel smoother than when it was in the Tenacious, because for one, I have used it a lot, but two, it's also halfway running on on the washer set from ZT, and ZT gets washers right. It it doesn't matter what price range they're doing, even Kershaw. They if they do Foster Bronze washers, they get it right, and it so it it really doesn't matter what price range. But yeah, I I just wasn't impressed with that. Currently. Out of the box, I'm impressed. So, Spyderco may have won me over on their higher end line. Like I said, I'm still not fully impressed with the finish work. I would definitely like to see a higher grit finish to make it just a better satin. But um, the carbon fiber, the titanium, even the clip, um, I actually am very impressed with this. The, the G10 backspacer is uh, is nice and flush, um, which I, I don't mind a protruding backspacer, but if you're making it flush, you you better make it flush. Because uh, um, there's been a couple of knives that I've had, and I think I even got rid of them, because it, the backspacer was just uncomfortable. It was raised more than it should have been, because they were going for a flush backspacer, but in certain places... It just catches on your hand and made it uncomfortable, and I think I just ended up getting rid of those knives. Didn't review them, didn't do anything, just got rid of them. But yeah. So far, I really do like this knife. Um, they probably could have gotten rid of that middle screw here. That's That seems just a little unnecessary to me. Because uh, it interrupts a nice piece of carbon fiber. These two screws, very necessary. That middle screw, I, I just don't see it. I really don't see anything that could be all that useful with it. Uh, the the, the uh, titanium liner, which, that if I'm not mistaken, the liner on this side is titanium. Um, it is nicely skeletonized. It's, it's not skeletonized all the way up, but underneath the carbon fiber, it is skeletonized out there. And this is actually a surprisingly light knife. I thought it would be a lot heavier than it actually was. But it is actually quite surprisingly light. Uh, I like the fact that this is S30V and not S35VN. I, I don't know. I, I just have not been impressed with, with S35VN. The edge holding capabilities just aren't as nice. Uh, I've never been able to get S S35 VN as sharp as S30 V. Um, I only have one S30 V knife, and that is my ZT0350. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, yeah, it, it might just be two. But yeah, I've I've got a couple of knives in S35V in it, and I just have not been impressed with it quite as much as I have been with my S30V. And just seeing this thing out of box, and how sharp it already is, I can tell you I'm going to be impressed with it. Now to just simply see how long it lasts. Uh, and even though it's already this sharp right out of box, I'm still going to put my own edge on it. I'm probably not going to going to regrind it at all in order to make anything um, like a keener edge or anything, but I definitely am going to touch it up, give it a nice mirror polish, so that way I can give it the best possible chance at lasting and being at its optimal sharpness. Because it, because while this thing is perfectly smooth and there's no catches anywhere. Uh, the fact that it's not perfectly polished will actually cut down a bit on the edge retention. And I, I don't do factory edge retention tests because 
because for one, uh, they're going to be, they're, they're just not going to last as long. And plus you do want to sharpen your knife a couple of times and, and redo tests to see how long it lasts instead of just simply doing it after the first one. Um, so yeah, that, that comes into play. Uh, just looking at, at a couple of things now, um, one thing that I've actually started to look at is, um, how do, how does uh, the, the company finish a tang of a knife? Because if you start looking at, at various things, like, uh, just pulling out some random knife in my drawer that I've got open over here, um, the CRKT, um, M16, the inside of that is, just looks chewed up, uh, doesn't look all that finished, but this is a 14, oh, 14, this is a $40 production knife, so we can't exactly expect that to be all that finished. Let's see the custom knife factory blade. Little chewed up, but a, but a bit better finishing, which they, they coated this all the way around, so that one piece right there is going to have a little bit better finish, but, um, but still looks fairly grinder satiny, so to speak. The inside of the strife is really well done. I do have a marking there that I put on myself because uh, being a titanium liner lock, there's going to be a bit of stick, and uh, so that that's what that mark is. But otherwise, it's actually fairly well finished, and for 500 bucks, it better be. Uh, I think I paid 215 for this one. And this is probably some of the best finish work that I've seen on a Tang. Because uh, since I've been watching Jim Skelton a lot for custom knives, then uh, I've started to have a bit higher expectation for my knives and uh, what they what they have. And uh, this is actually thoroughly impressing me. Even uh, along here, it's, uh, it's still really well done. Basically, every part of the blade is very well finished. And, but like I said, except for this part, but then again, like I said, that might grow on me as I come to appreciate the knife itself. Who knows? Um, just something to note. Um, if you don't get the, the proper angle flipping this thing open, the point right here does kind of catch on your thumb and it's not exactly pleasant but with but with time uh, flicking it open just in this video I've already come to to find out how to to not hit that but like I said it is something to note also the the inside of this is fairly sharp I may take a file to it and smoothen it out myself but again it it is something to note it's not exactly all that much of a joy to use because it is incredibly sharp. But then again, it does help your help the pad of your thumb to actually grip onto something. But like I said, I still might take off a bit of that edge because it's not the most pleasant thing in the world. Um, they do give you a, a nice cutout over here, but I kind of would like to see a bit more of a cutout over here as well because... Um, because that's a fairly, I can't exactly say sharp, but it's an abrupt edge, and it, that's not exactly the most comfortable thing. That'll that'll definitely form into a hot spot. But if I if I actually choke up a little bit, I really don't don't have a problem with that anymore. Because up here it seems to be a little bit more comfortable. But um, overall. I really do like the flow of this knife. It's fairly organic shaped, um, especially right here. It gives it gives it, it gives your thumb a, a nice thing to drop on. I'm actually kind of surprised to not see any jimping anywhere on this knife whatsoever. Usually, Spartaco is fairly famous for their aggressive jimping, and it, it's not anywhere to be found. Not even at reverse grip. There, there's nothing. But then again. This is a gentleman's carry knife. You don't always need jimping on a gentleman's carry. So while I'm surprised to not see it, 
not exactly unhappy that it's not there. I mean, I do have knives without jimping, and it's not exactly that big of a deal. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, uh, my ZT here has no jimping. That I was actually really surprised to see, because usually ZT does not let a knife out of the factory without jimping. But yeah, so I do have them. And uh, so it's not exactly a foreign concept, but personally I do like to have jimping on my knife. It, it's just a personal preference, but it's not something that I'm going to miss too terribly because it's not there. Probably the only thing that I'm going to be aggravated by by this knife is having to sharpen it. Because with so many curves, it's going to be a pain in the butt. But on the other hand, this is going to be a, a wicked slicer. It's got a recurve down here and up here. Another thing about this tip is that it's going to make it a lot easier to cut open packages for the simple fact that I can put that tip in there and it's going to grip into the tape instead of me having to stick a lot more of my knife in there in order to be able to cut it. And just simply to test that theory, I will, um, I will test it out on this tape here just to, yeah that works. Yeah. That works out pretty much as well as I thought it would. But I just kind of wish there was a little bit more tape on there. But but yeah, so that works out really well. Because I actually have had a, um, um, exa examples where, like, it just say that I was using this knife. I'd have to stick it into about here to ensure that I didn't lose traction on the tape. Now, I may be wrong about this knife here, but overall, I don't think it'll have that kind of a problem. Okay, let me test out the pocket clip real quick just to see how well it, it does, and then I'll basically cut the video off right there. It's not exactly the tightest pocket clip in the world, but I am not upset about that. Uh. Let me try that again. What exactly is catching there? Something is definitely... Ah. Be aware that the scallops in here do catch on your pocket and it prevents it from coming out immediately. So, that is going to chew up the inside of your pockets. Be aware of that. Um, probably fairly quickly I'm going to be removing this pocket clip, filing that down a bit, because I don't need my pockets chewed up within a couple of days of carrying this thing. Uh, so that is going to be an immediate fix that I start off with, probably even before I sharpen this thing, because I want to carry this thing today, which means I'm also sharpening this thing today. But yeah, that that is, that is going to have to change, because that is... Feeling it now, it is uh, fairly sharp, which is exactly what I was catching. So yeah, that that is going to have to change, and I don't care what it does to the looks of the blade. I don't care if it makes it look like crap. That has got to change, because um, that will tear up your pockets from the inside out. I'm going to have to buy new pants, and I'm not going to be happy. At which point, immediately this is going to go down as a hated knife for me all over again. Spyderco is going to lose all my business all over again. And there's not really going to be much of a chance for them to recover from this one because this is a $215 knife. So yeah, I want to like this knife. It's beautiful. But those scallops have got to come down. So, I'm going to cut it off right here. Expect to review sometime in probably the next month or two after I actually get um, get a decent amount of testing in on this thing. Um, I'll have to save up some cardboard because now I've, I've got a reason to do some legitimate testing.